All right, welcome to this video, a short introduction again on how to use GeoGebra for geometry purposes. The GeoGebra is part geometry, part algebra, actually does a whole lot more than that, but those are two of the, the most important uses and where it gets its name. I'm going to build today what's called the medial triangle, just to show you an example of how you can use GeoGebra. For geometry, you can enter things in on the input bar, but mostly it's driven by the icons at the top up here. And each of these icons, you'll notice, has a small white triangle or arrow in the corner. If you click on that, you'll get other options that you can use. So if I wanted to make a line segment, I could click on the line tool and pick line segment instead. Okay? I'm going to make a triangle first, and there's a couple of ways to do that. I'll show you. I could make a triangle using the polygon tool where you click the three points and then you join back up. Okay. That's one way to create it. Over here in the algebra view, it gives me the coordinates of the points, the lengths of the sides that it's labeled A, B, and C, as well as the area of the polygon. And if I use the arrow, I can move any of the vertices around and see the effect. I can move an entire side around as well. Oops, not if I've created it as a polygon. If I created it with segments, I could move the side. So I'm going to undo it to show you again a couple of other ways that I could make a triangle. So I'm going to go up to edit and undo, which undoes the last thing I did, which was moving it around. So I'm going to have to undo a couple of times to get rid of the triangle. As you see, you can also hit control Z or you can use the little yellow arrow over here to undo and the green arrows redo. So there's points. I'm just going to delete those manually. So one way would be to make points, and I wanted to show you that too. I'll click on the point tool and then just click A, B, and C. By default, it labels everything. You can go up to options and turn labeling off and on. I'm going to set it to where it only labels new points so it doesn't label sides and everything. Then I'm going to get the segment tool and just click on A and then B to complete that. Click on B and then C and then A and then C. And so there's a triangle without the interior shaded in. And again, I can move things around. This time I can actually move an entire side around. That's what we mean by dynamic geometry. You can move the shapes and see the effect. Over in the algebra window, you see the coordinates changing and the length changing. So there's a triangle. The medial triangle is made by forming the midpoints of the sides first, and there's a tool to do that. If you click on the point tool, there's a midpoint or center tool. And then if you click on a line segment, it'll find the midpoint. Okay. If I connect those three points, I'll get a new triangle. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to use the polygon tool so that it also gives me the area this time. Okay. So that's what we call the medial triangle. We have a theorem in geometry that says that this line segment DE is one half the length of AC of the opposite side and it's parallel to that third side. There's also a theorem about the area. Let me create the area of the entire large triangle. And I'm going to change the color of that. You can right click on any object and go into object properties and do several different settings including color. Mm, let's pick a blue shade. So there's the large triangle in blue and the other one in the kind of brownish red color. So you see these two areas. It might not be obvious right away but I can type in the input bar poly 2 which would also be the area of the polygon 2, the large triangle divided by poly 1, hit enter, and it adds it up here. It called it G, but it shows me. If I hover over, you can see that G is poly 2 divided by poly 1, and it says it's 4. Okay, if we move it around those area range, but you see that G is still 4 in all cases. Because in fact, the medial triangle, if you look, there's actually four congruent copies of that medial triangle that form the large triangle. So its area is 1 fourth of the large triangle. So that's some of the basics of GeoGebra. It's, it's pretty intuitive. You just click on the icons and you can see the different tools. You can make perpendicular lines, parallel lines, perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors. You can make regular polygons if you wanted to make, let's say, a regular hexagon. You click two of the sides and tell it the number of points. So if I wanted a hexagon, I'll click six. And there's a regular hexagon. So you can just play around. There's a circle tool. 
and it's pretty easy to figure out. I'll measure an angle and that'll be the last thing I'll do in this video. Let me click the angle tool. It depends on the order I do it in. If I click C, A, B, that's the proper direction to get Oops! If you click something you didn't want to do, just go click undo. I accidentally added a point without having the the arrow tool. But you can move things around, including labels, with the arrow tool. If I'd clicked in the other order, I would have gotten the reflex angle. If I do BAC, you get the angle on the outside. Let me show you. I'm going to delete the original. If you accidentally get the reflex angle and you don't want that, just right click inside the angle. Don't click on the number because that has its own properties. Click inside the green here and do object properties. You can change the color. I'll show you that quickly. I'll change it to yellow. You can make the angle yellow. A little hard to see in yellow. So let's change it and make it red. But on the basic tab you can click on allow reflex angle. If you take that off then it'll give you an angle that is not a reflex angle. So if you accidentally get the larger angle, the one that's bigger than 90 degrees or bigger than 180 degrees, between 180 and 360, we call that a reflex angle. The smaller one, the regular angle, if you want that, just disallow reflex angles. So there's other videos where I'll show you how to make the centroid and the circumcenter and different things like that, but for now that's just a quick introduction to how you can do some geometry with GeoGebra. And just one last thing, again I'll point out you have the algebra view and then what we call the graph view where you actually see the objects. And then over in the algebra view you have the information about each object which is either coordinates or a length or an area. So that's GeoGebra.